Good afternoon. So today I am going to show you how I make my marbled-ish alcohol ink tumblers. So what you are going to need, you're going to need a cup turner, which you can get off Amazon. I want to say I paid $50 for a double turner. Um, you're going to need a prepped cup. This cup came from Michael's. Um, it was sanded and painted white. You are also going to need a two-part epoxy. I use Amazing Clearcast. Um, you need part A and part B. You're going to need a measuring cup and a thingy, a popsicle stick. And then you are also going to need a few different alcohol inks. I found these at Michael's and I have some that I found on Amazon. We are using Gumball, Aquamarine, and Purple Twilight, and then White. And then that's all you need. Alright, so I'm going to start out by mixing up some epoxy. I use about 15 milliliters for my first layer. You need to have a decent amount. If not, your colors won't mix like they're supposed to because it moves around on the epoxy and then they marble into each other. So I use seven and a half of part A and seven and a half of part B. Make sure that you weigh it by volume, not by weight. Your part A weighs more than your part B. So if you do not have equal amounts of each, the kids are outside playing and she wants outside. Um, if you don't have equal amounts of each, your cup will not set up. It will either harden way too quick um, or it won't harden at all and you are stuck with a sticky mess. So I just mix this up until it's clear. I don't care about the bubbles because when I put it on the cup, um, my little spatula will pop the bubbles. So you mix it till it's clear. If you can still see some stringy stuff in it, it's not mixed all the way. And I just use a silicone spatula. Um, you can find them on Amazon, you can find them in Michaels, you can get them, if you buy a Turner kit, um, you get some in a Turner kit. So I'm just going to take my epoxy and I'm going to start putting it on my cup. And I hope the lighting isn't too horrible for you guys. Let me fix this. Maybe that'll help. And I'm just going to, I pour it in on a straight line and then I just brush it on or brush it all over. Some people will keep their spinner turning while they do it and actually that's what I used to do. Um, but I found it's easier for me if I do it like this. Um, if you do make one of these, make sure that you have, these are just silicone mats that I got off of Amazon for fairly cheap. They came three in a pack um, because I don't want to ruin my granite counter. And this does get messy. So if you don't have a silicone mat to put down, um, you can put down construction paper. That's what I used to use. Um, but I was using a lot of construction paper. Um, but you can put down construction paper. And then if you're using, when you're using your inks, um, you can put down paper towel to help soak up the ink that drops because you probably will have some ink that drops. Okay. 
And then for those of you who don't know, my name is Grace, and I run Grace's Custom Creations. We make lots of tumblers, we make shirts, we make signs, we make custom orders, we make decals, we make all kinds of stuff. And this is actually my first um, tutorial that I will be putting on YouTube, so don't be too crazy in my comments about how horrible it is. And I will tell you, I wish someone would have told me before I started, cup making um, can become an addiction. And it is a pricey addiction at that. So just a, for, a, a fair warning, you may never financially recover. So then I just turn the spinner on to make sure that I got um, all of my spots, that there's no wonky spots that didn't get um, didn't get epoxied. And then make sure you get the bottom of your cup too. I like to make sure that I get my edges really well because they're a pretty sensitive area as is. Uh, if it comes to the case that you drop your cup or anything like that. So I like to make sure that those are covered pretty well. And I did sand and spray the bottom of the cup with white paint. You don't have to use white paint. You can use whatever um, whatever color paint you want. So I let it spin for a minute to just kind of level it out. And while I'm waiting for that, I shake up my alcohol inks because they are alcohol and pigment. So they do separate. And then I just pick a color to start with and I dot it on. I dot it all over. There's not a specific way that I put it on. I just put it on. So I went in with the bubble gum and now I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put dots on top of my bubble gum. The white is thinner than the colors um, and this white helps it um, mix around. And then I always make sure that I put some on the bottom, if you drip it right there on that um, corner, I guess, um, and make sure you get, it helps push it down onto the bottom of the cup too, because if you have a colored cup, and a white bottom. It looks kind of funny. I mean, you don't have to, but I suggest it. And then I'm gonna go in with my Purple Twilight, and I'm just gonna put dots where I did not put uh, the bubble gum. And if you get dots on other colors, it's, it's okay. You're gonna have, the colors are gonna mix together anyway. And I'll come back and show you um, what this cup looks like when, when it's all mixed in. I actually have one over on the other turner. Um, so I can show you guys that one. And it's the same colors as this one. So um, if you've ever worked with alcohol ink before, or if you're thinking about it, 
just know that alcohol ink kind of does its own thing so if you're going for like unless you're doing solid stripe colors which I have one of those cups on the list um, and I'll do a tutorial for that too but unless you have um, a solid stripe color your colors are gonna mix together so if you get color if you accidentally get a dot on one of your other colors it's not a big deal because they're all gonna um, go into each other anyway so you want to make sure you have dots all over if you don't have enough dots then it won't marble in to one another And I know I have a lot of people that have been waiting for me to do a, tutor a tutorial on some cup making. I've had a lot of people ask me how I make cups. I've had a lot of people ask me to teach them. Unfortunately, I don't really have time to teach um, cup making because I have um, so many orders that have to be completed. So this is the best way to be able to teach anybody. All right, so this will spin. You will let it spin three to six hours, depending on the temperature of your house, depending on the humidity. Um, how long you let it spin depends on, I just let it sit and forget it, and then I come back later and I touch the bottom of the cup, and if the cup is, because I put a sticker on the bottom of the cup anyway, so if there is a fingerprint spot, no one will notice it. Um, so I let it spin anywhere from three to six hours. If I touch it and it's tacky, I'll let it go probably another hour and then I'll turn my spinner off. Sometimes um, I come to check it and it's, it's already pretty much hardened up. Um, so then I just turn my spinner off and then you need to let it sit for 24 hours um, or close to it before you put a decal on it. Um, or before you put your final layer of epoxy on it or however you're going to make your cup um, after this cup is done spinning um, I will come back in and show you how to put a decal on it um, I have this cup over here I'm gonna turn my camera around so bear with me for just a second and I will show you what it all marble into so it all all of those colors will start to marble together and make a really pretty make a really pretty one all right so we've had our cups um, spin three to six hours and then I turn the spinner off I let it sit overnight so for the next steps you'll need sandpaper or sanding block you'll need 120 grit or higher um, I use the fine one not the coarse one you'll also need some transfer tape you'll need the decal you're putting on if you're putting a decal on if you're not putting a decal on then you don't have to worry about the decal but you still do need everything else and I will be posting links to where you can find everything that I used in the description and you'll need uh, I don't know what this thing's called you'll you'll need something to to go over the decal um, but I'll show you that as well and then you'll need your epoxy and you'll need a brush and you'll need some clear matte spray paint at this point um, some people would spray alcohol on their cup and wipe it off however I do not um, I find sometimes it causes more harm than good so you're just going to take your um, sandpaper and you're going to sand over your cup don't sand horribly rough because you can take um, some of the color off so just give it a good go around 
you have to do this in between layers of epoxy in order for your epoxy um, to have some tooth um, to adhere and to stick. So you just go all the way around, just make sure you have, um, make sure it's roughed up. And I do the bottom as well. And then I just wipe the dust off with my hands. And I have a sticker that I put on the bottom. That's why I was saying when I touch the bottom to see if it's tacky. Um, if I leave a print, I'm not worried about it. Because I'm going to take my Made by Grace sticker. This is how I mark it myself. And stick it on the bottom. And then... These are phenomenal too. I'll put these in the description. These are great um, because I do, I have five spinners. Sometimes I do five cups, sometimes I do ten cups. Um, and after they have spun um, and they're tacky, instead of leaving them on the spinner, which you can do, I take them off and I put them on here. I just pull them off. I don't touch them, but I pull them off and I stick them on here. I pull them off by this right here. Um, and I let them sit so that I can work on more cups. So then from here, I'll take this off so you guys can see. From here, you're going to take your decal and your scraper and your transfer tape. And you can use this transfer tape multiple times. As long as it stays sticky, you can use it. And you're going to put your transfer tape over your decal. And I cut this out using the Cricut, and this is um, partially my design, partially not. And you're just going to take your scraper and you're going to scrape it over it. You're going to take your design off. It comes off. Sometimes you have to work it off. Sometimes you have to bend it. It depends on... The material that you use. I'm using Starcraft Vinyl from 143 Vinyl. Um, so then it'll all come off. Um, and the, these are actually cups for um, the Mission of Hope Cancer Foundation. These are fundraiser cups. And these will be going to, I have five of them, they will be going to a print shop to be sold from there. And from each cup that's sold, I do make a donation um, to the foundation. Make sure that you rub from the inside out to help prevent those bubbles. If you have um, little pieces like I have on here, make sure that you push them outwards. Um, if you get bubbles or if you get... Um, a messed up one you can just take a tool um, I have this little thing that I found at the Dollar Tree be careful with the metal tip because the metal tip will scratch the cup and I just um, put it under where the bubble is and I roll it out and then I flatten the vinyl back down and then I save my transfer tape because, like I said, you can use it um, over and over as long as it's sticky. And then I rub it down a little bit just to make sure that there are no bubbles in it. Um, if you get bubbles under your pack, under your vinyl, um, or if you, yeah, if you have bubbles under your vinyl and your epoxy gets under there, it'll pull it up, and you'll have to do um, multiple layers and multiple sanding um, to get it off. And then once this is done, um, I spray. I, I like to spray the entire cup so that when I put the epoxy on, I can see the color difference. Um, but I spray the whole cup with a mat, a clear matte spray paint, including the bottom. And it helps to prevent fish eyes. People um, will tell you to rub it with um, alcohol to get the impurities off because that's what fish eyes are caused from. Or um, not enough epoxy. 
Um, however, I have found that if you don't use, I don't use, like I said, I don't use the alcohol, um, but I found that if you spray it with a matte coat and then let it sit before you um, put your epoxy on, I don't have any problems with fish eyes over um, my vinyl. When I first started, I was having lots of troubles with fish eyes over my vinyls, and fish eyes are little holes um, through the epoxy. Um, where I'd be sanding cups and reapplying um, epoxy, sanding cups and reapplying epoxy. Um, so yeah, if you just spray with a, um, a light coat of matte clear spray paint, um, it works fine. So I ha already have a cup that's been sprayed for video purposes. I actually have four cups that have been sprayed. But, so we're going to... Oh, this one doesn't fit on there. That's okay. We'll put it on this turner. This turner is a little bit slower. I actually don't like this turner. Well, I mean, I can't say I don't like it because I don't horribly mind it, but um, it's a pain because this is the only um, pipe that fits on there. And this has a different screw than the other ones, and sometimes it's a pain in the butt to get it in, but it'll work for our video. I didn't think about that when grabbing the cups off of the front porch. So I'm just gonna put this on my spinner. And I'll even, I'll, po I'll post the link to where I found the spinners at too. So I like to spin it until my vinyl is on the top because I like to hit that with the epoxy first. And this actually might be easier for you guys to see what I do. So I'm going to take my cup and I have it measured. I'm going to do another 15 milliliters. Um, seven and a half part A, seven and a half part B. I like to pour my part A first. Because if you go in the order of A and B, if you get in the habit of pouring A, then B, then you don't have to worry about if you mixed double parts of part A or double parts of part B, which I've seen um, people have done before. So if you go in the order of A and then B, it's a lot easier. And then I found these little cups. Um, they have the measurements on the volume measurements on both sides. Again, you want to measure that volume not by weight because part A weighs more than part B. But they have, they're just little medicine cups. And I'll post the link to those as well. I really like these. Um, I think I got a hundred of them. And they're not expensive. They're only like $7. Um, but I got a hundred of them and I've had them for a few months now. So we're just going to take our popsicle stick and I just get my pop, my popsicle sticks at the dollar store. Um, they come in packs of a hundred for a buck. I just give it a stir. Like I said, I don't care about the bubbles because um, when I smooth it on, the spatula will pop the bubbles. We're not doing resin art or anything like that, so it's not that big of a deal. So we're going to take our cup and move this back a little further. I should have used a different one. Oh, well. We're going to, I make sure I have my little spinner ready. Make sure that you have a clean, um, a clean brush. And then you're just going to pour it on like we did, um,
for our first layer when we put the alcohol ink on. I like to put it kind of heavy um, over the decal just to make sure that I'm not going to get those fish eyes and to make sure that it's covered. And then you'll see that I do go in and go over the decal again because I don't want to have to worry about having any of those pieces not covered or sticking up. So I don't, there's not really a certain technique that you have to use when applying your epoxy. I do it a certain way because I um, have a habit of missing some of the pieces, some of the, some of the top, uh, some of the top of the rim. Um, and so I make sure I do that first. And then I just work my way down to the bottom. You guys can't see this very well. Let me move this camera a little bit closer. There we go. And then I just do it all the way around the cup. Sorry, you can hear my dryer in the background. The kids asked if they could help, and I told them that they couldn't help with this one because this one is going to a, these ones are going to a print shop. So I want them to be absolutely perfect. And you can see how um, all of those dots turn into a marble and even though um, I put all of the dots in the same pattern each cup has marbled um, a little differently and the colors have mixed a little differently um, and I always tell people that alcohol ink kind of does its own thing um, and I like I really like the alcohol ink marble because even if you do um, the same colors and the same pattern they still all mix a little bit differently, so you get a 100% one-of-a-kind cup. So then I just let it spin around for a second to make sure that I did get all of it. I go around the top while it's spinning to make sure that I did get all of the top part of the cup because like I said, I've um, screwed up the top part of the cup a couple of times and it didn't have enough um, epoxy. And when I went to go clean it up, it, um, it broke off a little bit. So then I go over that decal again to make sure. And then I come down to the bottom and I go around the bottom some more because this is a really sensitive area of the cup. Um, so I wanna make sure that if any accidents happen, like it gets dropped, that it doesn't, um, doesn't break. And I've had ladies who have dropped their cups off the top shelf and them not break. However, um, epoxy is not shatter proof, it's not break proof, it's not crack proof, it can still break. Um, so you want to take care when you're using um, a cup that you bought or made like this. then I'm 
just getting the bottom coated. I want to have my sticker nice and covered so that it doesn't come off. And then you just, hey honey, and then you just let this sit and we're done. Thanks for watching. Um, if this video helped you, like and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And then this, besides a squeaky turner, is what our five cups ended up looking like.